not a single human being on earth gets up and says, boy, I can't wait to go to the supermarket and buy a GMO food. And why is that? That's because after 30 years and hundreds of billions of dollars of public and private investment, they haven't been able to come up with one thing in this food that actually helps the consumer. No better taste, no lower price, no more nutrition, nothing, zip, zero, nada. 85% of all the genetically engineered crops in this country and around the world are designed so you can soak them with weed killers, toxic herbicides. And who are the big companies that do this? Come on, you know who they are. Monsanto, anybody, what, who else? DuPont, Dow Chemical, Syngenta, Bayer. What, what kind of companies are these? Chemical companies. As the chemical seed package has spread, and now with genetically engineered seed, seed that originally was free in India because it belonged to the farmers, or was low cost because it was released from the public sector universities that did seed breeding. In the genetic engineering revolution, these seeds are now patented property of one corporation called Monsanto. They take genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and insert it using very sophisticated techniques and create an artificial life form, a transgenic species that is impossible to reproduce in nature because the reproductive organs don't match. And as a result, once this form is created, here's the danger. It can cross-pollinate, it can contaminate the traditional crops. Percy Schmeiser was a farmer in Canada who was contaminated by Monsanto's genetically modified seed. Well, he realized he'd been contaminated because he used some of this herbicide to kill off weeds around utility poles on his property. When he saw some of the seed uh, did not die from the application of glyphosate, he knew it must be genetically modified. Well, he didn't do anything to purge his property of that contaminated seed. It would actually take three years of taking your crops out of use before you could completely purge them of the genetically modified seed. He decided he didn't want to do that because that would be costly. So he saved his seed for planting the following year and Monsanto said, well you now knew that you had genetically modified seed, you saved it for planting a second year, that's infringement. They sued him for patent infringement, it went all the way up to the Canadian Supreme Court and although they found that technically he did infringe their patent, they awarded Monsanto no damages. Both in Canada and the United States, hundreds of farmers have been totally bankrupt, lost their farms and so on through lawsuits by Monsanto. So there's a real fear. Now we call it the new fear, a fear culture amongst farmers where a corporation now through the rights of patents on, on a gene have, uh, which is inserted into a seed to make it resistant to a chemical or whatever, is that they lose their rights to use their own seeds or plants. So it's total control eventually that farmers have to go back to a corporation like Monsanto each year to buy their seed they're, as because they're no longer allowed to use their own seeds. So as a victim, you basically have to pay for the, your lawsuit, your damages, and so on. So farmers become victims because, and they have done nothing wrong because they were contaminated by a neighbor, by whatever means, by pollen flow, by seeds blown in the wind, transportation, and so on. So it doesn't matter how it happens. If you are contaminated, it's over and it's over. It's inevitable that someone who does not want to use their seed will become contaminated. Even the United States National Organic Program standards acknowledge this when they say you won't lose your organic certification if you're contaminated up to a certain percentage as long as you take efforts to try to avoid that contamination. Monsanto has said that it's the responsibility of an organic farmer to use large portions of their own property to set up buffer zones to try to decrease the likelihood that they'll be contaminated by their neighbors. But that's quite perverse when it's their seed that's the new entrant into the neighborhood. In the mid-90s, the UK government gave about three million bucks to a scientist to figure out how to test for the safety of GMOs. That scientist was Dr. Arpad Pustai, the world's leading expert in his field. He worked at the top nutritional research laboratory in the UK, one of the best in the world. He had about 20 or 30 researchers working with him in three different institutes. And his protocols that he was designing were supposed to be implemented into EU law as requirements 
for the safety assessments of any GMOs to be introduced into Europe. He took a potato that was genetically engineered to produce an insecticide and fed one group of rats the genetically engineered potato. He fed another group of rats natural potatoes and a third group of rats natural potatoes plus their meal was spiked with the same insecticide that the GM potato was engineered to produce. So you have GM potato, natural potato, and natural potato plus an insecticide and all three had a completed balanced diet as well. We measured all sorts of things, growth for example, how these young animals were growing, uh, what happened to their inside, and what happened to their immune system. And uh, it became clear uh, that uh, the GM had a, a slower growth. It had uh, problems with uh, internal uh, development of its organs, and it certainly uh, knocked out the immune system. Only the rats that ate the GM potato got sick. They had potentially precancerous cell growth in their digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system in 10 days. What was the cause of that damage? It was not the insecticide because the group eating the insecticide did not have the problem. It was understood that it was the process of genetic engineering itself and the unpredicted side effects that caused this profound damage to every system and organ study. He shared his concerns about GMOs and was a hero for about two days at his prestigious institute. The press was going wild. Here was a main scientist who was saying that we should not treat the people as guinea pigs, and that he personally wouldn't eat GMOs from what he understood. The director of his institute received two phone calls from the UK Prime Minister's office. The next day, Dr. Arpad Pustai was fired from his job after 35 years, silenced with threats of a lawsuit. His team was disbanded. They never implemented the protocols. Instead, a campaign was launched to destroy his reputation in order to promote and protect the reputation of biotechnology. We do have uh, all the methods available for testing, testing the safety of, uh, of uh, GM uh, crops. It will be unforgiven by uh, humanity